Inshallah next uh, month I will bring the new copies. Uh, you can buy from Warda Books. Yeah, but right now I heard that it's sold out lah. <laughs> That's what I heard right now. Allahu Alam. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Spy guy my siwa. Just nice that our we are on the chapter of repentance today because we are in Rajab and Rajab is the month of uh, istighfar and repentance. So inshallah. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa bihi nasta'in ala kulli umuri dunya wa deen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursalin. Sayyidina wa habibina wa shafi'ina wa nuri qulubina muhammadin. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa salim. Wa ta'aluma wa ta'alim. Wa tadakura wa tazkir. Wa naf'a wa nintifa'a. Wa rifada wa istifada. Wa lhatha ala tamasuki bi kitabillahi wa sunnati rasulihi. صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الخدا ودلالة على الخير ابتغاء وجه الله مرضاته قرب ثوابه سبحانه وتعالى مع لطف وعافية برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم نسك العلم لدني والمشرب السوفي الهني وهب يغني اللهم نسك العلم لدني والمشرب السوفي الهني وهب يغني اللهم نسك العلم لدني والمشرب السوفي الهني وهب يغني وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين آمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. I will continue with our book by Imam Abdullah bin Ali al Haddad. It's the book from the book رسالة رسالة آدا أبي سلوك المريد by the great scholar the treatise on the treatise on discipline on in the path of the seeker by the great scholar Imam Abdullah bin Ali bin Ali bin al Haddad al Hadrami al Shafi al Husayni. May Allah uh, have mercy on him and benefit us by by him and by his knowledge in this world and the next world where he has said. So chapter 2, he speaks about repentance. Right? So uh, we began our classes by uh, speaking about intentions, uh, about adab, the coming onto the path. Right? We also speak, we spoke on in the, la- in the last uh, lesson about the urge. Right? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts in a servant right, or in a slave, in a human being, uh, the the urge to want to know more about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the urge to want to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the urge to want to uh, worship uh, better. Right? And we know, you know, since the beginning, since for years, we've been uh, praying and fasting, right? When Allah puts in your heart that, you know, to improve, right? to go on this path and to, and to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is from the breezes. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends. Right? And these breezes, uh, as, as Imam al Haddad uh, quotes from the hadith from Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that for Allah there are breezes. Right? So you're supposed to uh, expose yourself to these breezes. And what does it mean? Go to the places where you know the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descend. Right? Like in the masjids, uh, with righteous people, with uh, the Quran, reading the Quran, istighfar, all of these things. Right? It comes here. So, so now, you know, if a person feels this urge uh, to better himself as he moves closer towards his death, uh, it is on him not to ignore this urge. Right? So, and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep knocking on our door, right? To keep knocking on our heart and right? to tell us, you know, to improve, uh, do, something, do something about it, be better. Uh, you are on your journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the human being, when he calls it to the human being, Ya ayuhal insan, inna ka kadihun ila rabbi kadihan fa mulaqi. Right, oh human being, right, for surely you are striving, you know, and, you're, and you're toiling, you know, it's, it's, it's all tiredness, it's toil, it's striving, right, but you're, at the end of the day, you're going towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's it. You're going towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter whether you worked for it or not, you will get there. Right, so, mashallah, for most people, as they grow older, alhamdulillah, they get more and more spiritual as death begins to stare at you in your face. Right? You begin to get more and more, you begin to realize that it's a matter of, matter of time. Right? When this test of this world ends and you will go to your maker, to your creator and answer for all that is there. Right? So, it's on a human being not to ignore it. And it's from Allah's mercy that he keeps uh, shaking the human being. To wake up the human being, that like things will happen to you in your life. You, it keeps happening, right? But you know, for some people, if they keep ignoring it, Imam Mahadat says in the previous chapter, like if you keep ignoring it, it stops, mm-hmm. right? because 
we have been reminded, 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 reminded. And for some people, they just they become harder and harder and harder with each reminder, and that is um part of that is a is a very a uh, terrible state, right? To be in it's a form of istidraj. Right? It's a form of um like Allah gives the dunya to this person because they want the dunya so much, so they get the dunya and they have no and nothing for them in the akhirah. And may Allah protect us from that. So the beginning of the path is always. Uh, uh, true repentance, because if you want to get close to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, uh, you cannot be carrying so much burden all the time, right? And repentance, the word tawbah in Arabic, it means to always be turning to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, right? So and this keeps a servant humble, it keeps a servant reflective, right? And also reprimanding the self constantly, right? So and and you know one one of the habits of scholars of the past. Is that they will have a notebook, right? Or uh, whereby every day they will write down what they did in that day that they were not proud of. Right? So instead of writing like achievements, they actually write you know failures right, in their in their book. I right? say so today, oh, I raised my my voice at my mother today. Write it down, right? Today, what did I do? Oh, I prayed my prayer. Uh, I delayed my prayer, right? And what did I do today? Oh, today, you know, I backbite my friend. What did I do today? Today, I, you know, like, like in the sense, they'll put it all down, and as they move in life, <laughs> as they, <laughs> as they, as they move in life, they begin to look at at at, at their book, and they see there's a, an improvement. Then every year, when you reflect on your book, you see, oh, like last year, this year, same thing only. I <laughs> know, no change, nothing. You know, and this is one of the things that I, that re- repentance like comes with reflection. And and there is a movement towards being better. And no human being can say that you are you are perfect. The moment you say you're perfect, then there is one sin right there of arrogance. <laughs> and then you think that you're so you're all of that. And all of us are just trying in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have hope in Allah's mercy and his grace that he accepts from us. And we have fear in our own selves, you know, and our own uh, shortcomings, like right? that we uh, you know that we have nothing to show. On a day of judgment, with our deeds, our prayers, our our fasting, our zakat, all like what do we show? With the, with the sincerity that's there, right? The khushu that's there, the the pure uh, intention for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, right? Is it all there, <laughs> or you know we just hope that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala accepts from us, you know, inshallah. Right? So that's why the first the first step right, is repentance. Right, because you cannot go on this path towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you don't know how to self-reprimand. It's a very important step to know how to self-reprimand. You are your best critic, actually. Right? You are actually the best critic. Of course, you can be the worst critic, right? but you can be, if, you're, if, you're, if you're honest with yourself, you're, you're, you are your best critic. Because when other people, when other people you know, criticize you, you, get to become, you, you tend to become defensive. And you make, you know, you say, but you don't understand. You, know, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know, you know, and you're saying, you all, you also the same. <laughs> yeah. And so you have all these rebuttals, you know, against, you know, rest, just all these answers, like you answer back. Right? But if you yourself say to yourself, uh, you won't answer back to yourself. <laughs> right? Right? But you'll say, yeah, today I, uh, I was too harsh on my mother today. Or you say today, or oh, my children, maybe I raise my voice too high. <laughs> my children today, you know, and, and, you, and you self-reflect, you self-reflect, you self-reflect with your children, with the neighbor, with the cat outside. <laughs> yeah, nice to the cat, <laughs> kind to the cat, the cat made dua for you. <laughs> right, mashallah. Um, make dua. Animals make dua, mashallah. Right, there are there are situations in some uh, time whereby uh, the animals make animals make dua. Right, in fact, uh, uh, <laughs> 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 you must talk to them. Say. Ah, so you you give them food there. Yeah. <laughs> That's the key. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the the animals make it still far for the people who are nice to them and kind to them. They say, mashallah, it's, mm, like, like especially for those who like now. <laughs> and <laughs> tomorrow the cat someone want to find it. What happened to her? <laughs> so she's so nice to us. <laughs> Oh, uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about it the other day, right? 
Ya, mashaAllah. Eh, but cats, animals, animals make doa. Animals make doa. I mean, you can be nice to them. You don't have to keep them. But you can be nice to them. Uh, you can be nice to them. Yeah. yeah. And then they know where their rizki, where their rizki lies, mashaAllah. Yeah. So as as uh, I mean in a, in a in a hadith whereby we just took this now in, in the in the other class in the beginning of guidance, right? When uh, Rasulullah said that for the one who seeks secret knowledge, this the fish in the sea uh, uh, seek forgiveness for them on their behalf. Because they're so and my teacher said to me because they're so busy seeking secret knowledge, right? Because they're studying and they're learning and they're memorizing and they're going for class to class to class. That while they're learning. The fishes do the istighfar for them, <laughs> right? and their sins get forgiven as they seek secret knowledge. Mashallah, this is from the Hadith of Rasulullah Sallam. Like, and of course, you know, with animals and with you know all whatever Rasulullah says in the Hadith, any living thing there's a reward in it. Right? Meaning that being kind to any living thing gives you reward. Including and, plants. Yeah, including plants. <laughs> being nice to plants. <laughs> and not just plucking them and you know and uh, abusing the plants <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> Right. Yeah, you comfort them, eh? Of course, not on, not on purpose. You didn't keep it on purpose, right? It's just it's, it's still far like that. It's not it's not on purpose, kan? That's an idea. Yeah, the spider. It's like yeah. Okay, the lizards, there is a, a recommendation to kill lizards. Oh, and lizards. Kill, from lizards. Huh? lizards, okay. Uh, pests, if they are like, of course, you can drive them out, it's better lah. But if like pets, that becomes really uh, cockroaches, rats. <laughs> yeah, because they're pests. Spiders are not pests, in a sense. Lah. They're not pests. They actually help you get rid of the pests. <laughs> They actually yeah, eat up the pests. You need to recognize which one the poisonous one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was so funny. It was yeah. 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 Jumping big spiders. Uh, so what 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 you can do is that if you if you recite uh this ayat, "Assalamu ala Nuh in fil alamin, inna kadhalik najid muhsinin." Right, this ayat uh, it is recommended by Rasulullah Islam right, for us to recite morning and evening. It protects you from dangerous animals. Uh, so every morning, evening, morning and evening to recite this ayat. Uh, it's actually in the Wirat Latif, yes. It's in there. Yeah, Wirat Latif is a compilation of zikr from Rasulullah Islam to be recited morning and uh, that, that is from yourself uh, uh, in the day or in the in the year. Right, so today, uh, this month, we are actually in the half at the half point of Rajab, and Rajab is a month of repentance uh, and istighfar. So, inshallah, later on, I'll go through some istighfar that you can do. 
uh, from the Prophet and some some from the righteous, right? And then we just reflect now on how they actually uh, bring forth that istighfar to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and repent to Him sincerely. Right? So just start this chapter, right? A chapter to repentance, repentance and its conditions, protecting oneself, protecting oneself from sins. A seeker on the path to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala should begin by repenting completely towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala from all the sins. If he has treated unjustly any of the creations of Allah, or take what is rightfully theirs, or has debt right, to them, he should co- correct this by giving everyone their due. If the item does not exist anymore, right, then he should replace it or ask them to release him of those debts. Verily, whoever encumbered their debts or the uh, by, by by debts or the rights of another, another being cannot proceed towards a real path to, to, to the truth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the first thing. Because uh, uh, sins are like burdens on, on, on your back. Uh, you cannot travel quickly and you cannot travel far if you're carrying all these burdens. So every day you must throw it off. Uh, and it also forms sins, they form blackness over the heart. And if blackness over the heart, the light of guidance from the Quran, from our prayers, from our zikr, cannot enter into your heart. Because it's all blocked by all these sins. Sins is actually more dangerous than anything else on the human body, on the human soul. Right? To actually you know, uh, uh, engage in sin, especially if someone was to do it, uh, enjoying right, the engagement in sin. Uh, that is of the worst kind. Right? So sins, you know, and shaitan, he's not, you know, he's, of course you mentioned before that shaitan, his game, he makes you sin, right? but he will not stop there. Right, because he knows that sins can be forgiven in the, in the, in, even in the next world. Right, if someone dies on La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, right, if, as long as they die on, on the shahada, right, in the next world, their sins can still be forgiven. Can. Allah can forgive, forgive anything. So Shaitan, he's not content by just people sinning. Right? He makes them sin, sin, sin to the point that they feel uh, unworthy of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and then he begins to push them out uh, to the point whereby they just feel, you know what, they're just not going to be Muslim anymore. Uh, they're going to leave the religion altogether. Uh, that is the game of shaitan. Because he knows that once they leave the religion, uh, he can close the door on them. Right? That means mine. Right? This soul is mine to the hellfire. Uh, that is what his, his game. Lah. And shaitan, he knows, he knows about Allah's mercy. He knows all about Ramadan, where, where sins are all forgiven. He knows about uh, istighfar and tawbah. He knows all these things. And he knows it's very easy for a person to get your, your book clean by just doing istighfar and tawbah and being sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows about it. Right? So he's not, he's not, uh, he, I mean, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's experienced. <laughs> and he knows how it is that he spent so much time making people commit sin. Ramadan comes along and then they seek istighfar and they tawbah to Allah and they change their lives and then all of his all those years of effort on this one person all wasted <laughs> to shaitan and that's why for shaitan he aims towards uh, murtad he actually aims there that's why we are warned uh, we are warned of sin don't think oh small sin only don't think one time only don't think you know a few times only don't ever think that I don't underestimate the uh, the plots of shaitan of course, his plots are weak, right? But he, he pulls people slowly, right? Step by step by step by step out of the religion, right? Slowly. So you say, it's okay, just do it one time. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And I know of someone, one of my friends when I was in university, right? This person, uh, when she was young, right? She would never miss a single prayer, ever, right? And then she said, when, I, when, she, went to uni- when she went to secondary school, began to miss Zohol. Right, and then go to uh, Polly, begin to miss Asar and Zohol. Mm. And she said the first time she missed the prayer, it was very difficult on her. And right? she cried and she repented and she didn't she never do it ever again, and then miss again. And then so with every prayer being missed, the heart gets used to it. The heart gets the blackness comes to form over the heart. Gets used to it after a while, the prayer missing the prayer means nothing to her anymore. At first, it is very painful. But after a while, you get used to it. Right? So the same thing with any form of sin. Right? At first, you will be, you know, uh, you will feel the pain, and that is that is, that is the sign of iman in the heart. That you feel the 
pain of sin. You committed a sin. You feel the pain of it. But if someone keeps ignoring it and then keeps doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, after a while, get very numb right, towards it. Like, same thing also on the other end, if somebody is doing a lot of sin and then wants to move out. Right, so the first time they resist it, right, it, you can feel the sweetness. Right, while, while it is difficult, but you can feel the sweetness of doing it. Right, and then you keep doing, doing, doing. Then you get you can, can can really experience more and more and more sweetness, getting closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Like someone who stays away from sin. That's why the ulama say, right, that uh, for a person to stay away from sin, is more virtuous, right? Is is higher if Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, right, than a person who wants to do a lot of sunnas but still wants to do all the dosa. Uh, on purpose, on purpose. It means like, so. Someone, for example, if someone does does the five prayers. And tries his best to stay away from all the sins that he knows about. His best. And every day do it istifa. As compared to somebody who does the five prayers, right? Uh, and then does the uh, like some sunnah here and there. And then goes out and gambles, for example. <laughs> or goes out and drinks. Right? And knowing that it's a sin, but say, oh, I will, I will do all these other things, but I will still do all my, my, my dosa, you know, all my sin. Uh, that is actually more virtuous that a person does their wajib and stays away from sin. It's more virtuous. Now, of course, you do both better. Lah. You stay away from sin. To actually stay away from sin is more virtuous than to uh, relish <laughs> in sin right? and then uh, do sunnahs here and there. And there. But, but still... Huh? <laughs> That's our balance, kan? <laughs> right. I mean, because your good deeds are supposed to stop you from doing your sin. You're not supposed to go out and do sins uh, readily. You know, happily go out and aim to do sin. Uh, the one is uh, is in a terrible situation. Of course, the worst situation is the one who does sin and does not do any form of worship. <laughs> uh, that one's the worst of the worst, right? And of course, the best of the best is the one who does all the forms of worship and all the sunnahs and stays away from sin. And uh, that's the best. Right, so you have like a spectrum lah, of people. Right, so of course, if you do all the sunnahs, right, don't say, oh, because I do sunnahs, I can go now and just you know, hang out with my friends and do all kinds of dosa and whatever. No, you can't say that. Uh, but you still have to stay away from the sin. Uh, it's better. So it's never, some, a, a, a believer should never say, oh, it's only a small sin. Uh, they should never say that. Uh, if it's a sin, it's a sin. Sayyidina, uh, Sayyidina Ali said, you don't look at the sin, but you look at the one you're sinning against. Uh, so if you focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you won't say, oh, dosa kecil. You know, I don't even know like who in the world invented the, the term, you know, small sin. And what do you mean by small sins, right? Just, you know, sin is a sin. St- stay away from it. But of course, every day we will fall into it. You know, we, we fall short of our prayers. We fall short of our, uh, our of giving our family their rights. We fall short all, of a lot of things. We don't remember Allah subhanahu enough. We might talk about people. That's why every day you have istighfar. Right? But you don't purposely go there and do that. Knowing that you're sinning, you purposely do it. Uh, but you actually uh, stay away and then you don't love istighfar. Right, so he says here, right, so the first and foremost, first, and foremost, first thing he says, protecting oneself from sin. So we read, we read through that. Right, and he says that, okay, when it comes to true repentance, the first thing he speaks about is that if this sin has to do with other people, uh, that's the first thing. Eh? So if this sin is against other human beings, for example, you stole from someone or you went to backbite somebody else, or slander someone else, re, uh, uh, destroy the reputation of somebody else, right? Uh, vandalize their property right? in any way. So you are you are infringing other people's uh, rights. Uh, you you're, you're hurting other people, right? You need to undo that. Uh, you must undo the hurt, right? So if you stole, and so he says, if you stole, then you must give it back, lah. You can't just say, oh, I taubat from stealing. And you keep all the stolen stuff. <laughs> you can't, you, that's not, that's not about taubat. Uh, taubat is you take it, you go to the people and give it back. If you're too ashamed to say that you actually stole, like for example, you go to someone's house, you take their stuff, no one knows it's you. <laughs> and then you go off. right? And then, and then you say, okay, if I want to give it back now, ready taubat, must I tell her that I took her stuff? Or can you just enter the house and put it there and go out? <laughs> it means you return the stuff, right? Right. I mean, okay. Of course, the the uh, the scholars say, of course, if you feel that if by telling her, right, she's gonna get angry with you, 
But not, why do you steal my things? You came to my house, trusted you. You're my own cousin, or you're my own this, you're my own that, and you just come in my house and take my stuff. <laughs> I mean, if you want us, lah, give it to you. <laughs> I don't have to steal. Right, so the scholars say that if you feel, if you if you know, no, if if you know that it will uh, create some sort of animosity with you and that person. Uh, they begin to hate you or don't trust you anymore. Can't come to my house anymore. <laughs> right? Then you can uh, bring the thing back right? and leave a note next to it right? and it's to apologize and remain anonymous. Mm-hmm. Right? So nobody knows the issue but you give it back. You, you must give it back and he says that if you don't have everything anymore, so maybe for example you steal uh, people's food and you ate it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not with you anymore. right? Uh, then you can go and buy Right, and give and tell them because I think you're thinking giving them you're you're giving them a gift. <laughs> right? You're being so nice and giving them a gift. Right? Or if you stole a person money and you've used the money already, right? Then of course you must give back the money lah, and then the, the cash itself. And uh, that will require you to own up right? because you actually did this. Right? But if you did he buy for the house? You for it. Does he allow that you take it? <laughs> no, I need to know whether he's okay with it. Technically, it's not yours. Huh? Technically, okay, with your, with your husband's things, it's like, with your children's things, your children's things are be, those children who are below uh, the age of, uh, of, of puberty. And they don't own things. And so their things actually are owned by their parents. Oh, so it's, oh, it's chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> chocolate's mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, what you can spend on them, you know, to help you out in your expenditure on them, right? But, 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 uh, your husband's things are his, right? But of course, if he bought, if an understanding that anybody in his house can eat it, or if he bought it specifically for himself and put it in the fridge and then you ate it, is it? You assume that it's for you, lah. Okay, if you assume that it's for you, then it's not stealing because you don't know. But you should have asked. Like this, who's who's one of this? Do you buy for me? <laughs> yeah, but. <laughs> okay, the hukum eh, hukum eh, you're doing for ruling. Okay, the ruling is, uh, a person's property, is a person's property, and yeah, that's the ruling. Right, so of course for husbands, right, they uh, they have a responsibility to support the the wife. So if he gives you, you know, a house, food, clothing, that's for you. Right, if he goes out, he buys for himself something for him mm-hmm. is his, right, and he puts it in the fridge. Okay, then depends. Some husbands don't mind, right? That you don't eat lah, because whatever's in the fridge is for anyone who finds it, right? Some husbands. If he, they bought it, it's for them. So you need to know your husband. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> then next time you need to ask his permission, lah. Uh, you ask his permission. Uh, of course, you ask. You, uh, yes, you need to. You need to ask his forgiveness. Ask his forgiveness. He says, "Sorry, can you forgive me?" And then, and then after. After ask for forgiveness, you gotta do again. <laughs> you need to, you know. <laughs> that means you don't want it to be eaten, lah. If he's hiding it in a better place. <laughs> no, your husband will like this class. Yeah, correct. <laughs> yeah, basically anything that is in that is not yours is not yours. You need to ask uh, for, for permission about it. For myself personally, because my sister's uh, son, I said I really, I really takut. Because my sister's son, he's uh, an orphan, right? His father passed away. So whenever he and he's like seven years old, 
Right, and then so whenever he has chocolate or whatever, put in the fridge. Right, and then when I look at it, I'm like, if I eat, is it like taking the wealth of a yatim? <laughs> <laughs> taking the wealth of a of an orphan? Is his chocolate? <laughs> right, and I always like, no, I cannot, cannot. It's halal. It's halal. It's cannot take it. But he's very generous. Like, just ask him, he'll give it to you. Right, but then like, I I always don't touch his stuff because I was so scared that is the orphan's wealth. Is the orphan's wealth. <laughs> It's something belongs to the orphan. <laughs> Poor orphan. He's gonna look at who took my chocolate. <laughs> so be very careful lah. Around, if you have orphans around you, you need to know like don't take their stuff, don't break their stuff. Don't I even mean, they, they're orphans. They have no father. Uh, anyway, just to be on the side, you know, uh, to to be on the side of precaution, right? Uh, that we always ask. Uh, so before you take things from people's house, always ask. Like, of course, unless you know that it's understood. Like, if you go to your auntie's house. Of in the house understood anybody can just go into her kitchen and eat her food. Ah, uh, because it's understood and no problem. Uh, but if you know your auntie is very particular about touching her stuff, ah, uh, then you can't touch anything. Uh, even if it's your own auntie, you'll be like, no, 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 she's, she's the kind whereby she gets very upset. Ah, uh, and then you can just you need to respect her things lah. Mm. So, so it uh, so when it, if this wrong is against someone else, right, then it's on you, uh, to actually uh, uh, correct the wrong. Right, so for example, so this is with things. Things is actually easy. You just go back and just apologize and then just uh, give it back. When it comes to people's uh, dignity, uh, so if someone goes around slandering other people, right, or gossiping, or lying, uh, so you lie to someone in their face, now you want to repent from it, right, you need to undo it, especially if there's a lot of damage done. Right? So if in, in, the, in the workplace, right, someone slanders a co-worker, Right, uh, and now want to repent, want to taubat. They need to actually go around and and try to correct what they said. Right, so when you say, "Oh, well, you know, last time when I said that she was the one who, uh, she she should always slack in her job. She won't do her things properly. Everything. If, if you want to really repent, you need to go around saying that. Oh, actually, I was wrong about her. Uh, she's a very hardworking person. She's a very. I need to undo the damage. And right? that is a full. That is giving them back what you took from them. Because in this case, you took their dignity or you took their good name. Right? And you put a bad name there. And you need to undo it. And right? then, then it's more difficult to actually go around and say, oh, like, oh, I'm a liar and I lied about her. You know, it was actually me who took all the chocolate in the, <laughs> in the, in the, in the, in the company's pantry. Right? In a sense, that, must say, right? you, need, you need to actually um, clear people's name right, about it. Right? So, yeah. Ah, it's a good question. So, say someone, a person slandered, right? Passes on. So, they say at this, in this situation, because of the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where he says, on the, where he says to, the, to the companions, who is the bankrupt? And the companion said, the bankrupt, Ya Rasulullah, is the one who has no money, right, or has no f- way of earning money. He's the bankrupt. Then the Rasulullah says that, no, the bankrupt, the real bankrupt, is the one who comes on the day of judgment, with mountains of good deeds, right? But he has, uh, he has insulted that person, or has hurt that person, or stared at that person, or lied against that person, and they will come up to him and they will take from his good deeds, right? They will claim, they make claims, and then when he is finished, he has no more good deeds to give out, and there is still a long line of people, right, coming up to him to claim, right? They will begin to to pile their bad deeds onto him, uh, throw their dosu onto him. Right, um, and then and then Allah will take him and fling him to the hellfire. Right, so in this situation, right, uh, what we can do now we are repentive and they already passed away. Right, so what you can do is that you can sedekah on their behalf. Uh, give up sedekah on their behalf. And right, what this means is that you sedekah is a good deed that you do. Okay, this good deed you're putting it aside as reserve <laughs> on the day of judgment. They can claim this one. <laughs> right, uh, so if they come up to you, it's okay. Me, you can claim. Uh, this this sedekah that I did is masjid, you know, that I built, or this, you know, depending on how terrible the slander was, lah. <laughs> you think how much they will claim, eh? <laughs> uh, so you give out give out money, right? Or you ask Allah to forgive them, uh, so so they won't have their sins to throw onto you. <laughs> you say, yeah, Allah forgive so and so, yeah, Allah forgive so and so, yeah, Allah forgive so and so, right? So you 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 do ah for them after your prayer, say that Allah forgives Even their sins. If you're a pious, virtuous person, you know, on the 
but yeah. behind this blender with plastic and mm. so that those deeds that you have done should be taken away from you yes yes yeah yeah yeah, so so people who go around slandering and, and uh, backbiting, th- and then they go and pray the whole night, they're just basically doing all these prayers to give to other people. <laughs> right, basically, that's what they're doing. And the irony is that they do all these things, uh, they slander, usually they slander their enemies. So the irony is that they're actually doing all these good deeds. When people, people slander, you tend not to slander your beloved friend. You tend to slander you know, or backbite people you don't actually like. <laughs> <laughs> like usually yeah. and right. uh, so the irony is that you begin to all these good things that you're doing right you're actually doing it for the people you don't like <laughs> and you're going to give them eventually anyway right. i mean that's an irony right i mean it's mashallah that's how the religion works and that's why uh, imam if i'm not wrong mashallah uh, imam uh I'm wrong, imam ahmad bin hanbal imam abu hanifa one of the great imams right someone came to him and said to him that person uh, was slandering you and the imam, he got a gift and he went to that person and he says, this is a gift for you. And they will say, why, why are you giving me a gift? And he says, well, you gifted me all your good deeds. The least I could do is give you my gifts, <laughs> give you a gift for doing that. <laughs> I mean, this is much how they understand. Eh? They, understand. they don't even get upset if somebody said that they like, you just giving me all your pahala like, for free. <laughs> so that's from Rasulullah Islam, like, the one who is a real bankrupt on the Day of Judgment. The one who does that. Right. We forget what we did. But we know we did lots of bad things. To against somebody, yeah. Ah. Is that person still alive? No, I, I, we have no idea. Or we don't know where they are. Ah, yeah, yeah. Right. Ah, ah, like for example, like in secondary school, already, ah. already balik, right? Ah. Already balik in school, but have enemies ah. here and there. Yeah, money. Oh, oh, money. <laughs> Borrow your friends' money and never pay back <laughs> forever. Right, it's the same thing. Uh, you don't even know whether they're alive or dead. You don't know where they are. Can we contact them? Right, so same thing with the sedekah. Right, so you give sedekah on their behalf. Right, then inshallah it will clear. And you give enough that you think can okay, clear the amount of things that I owe people. <laughs> right, it's, like, it's like when it comes to sin against other people, it's the most, like the scariest one. Because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala easy, just turn to Allah and ask Allah to forgive you and then you can have a, a, a restart. Right? So if someone used to drink, easy, just stop drinking, uh, tawbat to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and don't do it ever again, finish. Mm-hmm. Right? But when it comes to other people, that sin is very, very tricky. And on the day of judgment, all of these sins, right, uh, when it comes up, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in some of the hadiths, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will not touch it. Right? But he will say, you need to ask that person. To forgive you, you need to ask that person to forgive you. Ask that person to forgive you, <laughs> right? So it, uh, and there was there's a hadith where Baruch Sallam uh, narrated that on the day of judgment, right, two brothers will be brought forth, right, and one brother will make claims on his other brother, saying that he did this to me, and 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 make all kinds of claims like, on his brother, right? And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will say to him. Uh, uh, do you want to forgive your brother? Then he will say, no. no I want to make my claims on my brother. Right? Then he will be shown uh, like a palace in paradise. And then he said, oh no, what palace is this? Right? Which, which prophet does it belong to? Or which martyr does it belong to, this palace? And then it is said, it belongs to the one who forgives his brother. And then he will say, I forgive my brother. <laughs> right. And you see, it's Allah's mercy. You know, Allah's mercy on a person. Of course, not for us to go around and you know, hurt our brothers and our sisters. Right. Right. But it's, uh, Allah says, and then say, enter your, enter your parents. And then Allah will say to him, and bring your brother with you. Right. And all forg- bring your brother with you. Uh, bring, all of you are forgiven. All of you are forgiven. I, I think I did something really wrong to you. Mm. And Like you know, like day, night, afternoon, evening, cannot sleep. You know, like if you need forgiveness from Allah, but this person that I've wronged will never forgive me. <laughs> right, so if if <laughs> no, if you if you have asked the person, when it comes to seeking forgiveness from people, if you've asked the person mm-hmm. and the person refuses to forgive you, mm-hmm. okay, on your account, finish reading. Yeah. Now the person 
can be questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why didn't you want to forgive your own Muslim sister uh, why so you, are you that angry uh, yeah you're able to forgive and, and uh, our, our great example Zayna Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu like when his own cousin that he used to give sadaqah to regularly every month his own cousin slandered his own daughter Sayyidina Aisha uh, against his own best friend Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam right so when and the slander was a very vicious slander i right, saying that she committed adultery right, behind the back of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam it's a slander like outright slander so saying and this cousin he Rasulullah Abu Bakr used to give him charity every month right, so you can imagine how painful that is eh? the very person that you used to help all this while Right now, stand your own daughter. You get you get very you know angry then. Right, uh, ungrateful, the ungrateful, so ang- you get so angry with him. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr, right, the most that he did was that he says to his cousin, you know, or he or he takes an oath, I am not going to give him any more sadaqah already. Very angry with him. Allah Subhanahu wa when he said when he said that, Allah sent down at a verse in ayat. And Allah says, let not one of you, of the meaning, let not one of you swear not to do something that is good. Right? Won't you like, and forgive people. Don't you like Allah to forgive you? And Sayyidina Abu Bakr, straight away, he took back his oath. And he says, I, would, I want Allah to forgive me, I want Allah to forgive me. And he continued to give the person uh, charity. They're kind of like difficult, eh? Difficult. <laughs> <laughs> but that's got orang yang they have taqwa they have taqwa for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they hear the verse they know it's about them yeah. right, straight away they, 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 they respond right but does he have every right not to want to give he does yeah. but his level is in our bakar you know someone who is you shouldn't let you know the deeds of other people affect your deeds mm-hmm. now you're doing the good deeds for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whether or not they deserve it you're doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right, so it's, it takes like a big heart <laughs> right, from a person to be able to see that and just overlook what was done right, and just to continue being good to people even if they were they were evil towards you that's too much Allah you say like um, someone who's racist you know, mm. and then um, they're mean to you so you grow up right so you need to let it out but if you talk amongst your friends your close friends or your husband and all that like how do you and but you still forgive that person after whatever that she has done but you already said it to other people (laughs) so how does that so it does okay so if you if you're just venting right you're venting out to other people it does fall under backbiting yeah yeah even to your husband (laughs) unless 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 (laughs) Unless, unless he can help the situation. So if you're looking for a solution, uh, so you say you go to, but again for a solution, you need to go specifically to those people who can help you. Uh, so if someone is like being really, really annoying at work or really mean, so you go right to the uh, the boss or the HOD or the head of department, whatever lah, and you say, can you advise her? Because if you advise, it will not work. Uh, this person advice it will work, and that kind of thing you go to the person, right? But or if you say you if you say you speak to your husband, you're looking for a solution. What should I do? Eh? Like, how can I help her? Eh? How can I help myself? Eh? What should I do? Eh? Uh, you're looking. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, but be sincere. But at, at best, if you can if you can keep it anonymous, lah. Say you know my friend, she said this about me. Is it true? <laughs> And you go like that, and you go, or you just say, you know, she she did this, you know, what should I do? Eh? Uh, so just say like, my friend or my coworker or my colleague, whatever lah, like, and then he can give advice. So basically, basically all of these things, uh, all of these things is it is there is a purpose in it. You're looking for a solution, renting, like that. Just 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 renting, just plain empty renting without seeking solution, has no benefit. There's no benefit whatsoever. You have this uh, responsibility that you sin yes. on, on that person. So do you have to actually tell that person? Okay, that okay. so now so now the problem of of after you spoke about someone behind their back, mm-hmm. now you want uh, 
to repent, mm-hmm. right? Okay, if telling that person will make things much worse, mm, yeah, <laughs> right, and they get even angry at you and they hate you even more, right? then, then there's, a more, there's a bigger fitna there, kan? Yeah. So the same thing, you ask Allah to forgive them, right? Uh, their sins, and you give to the car on their behalf, oh. right? I mean, you do, it means you do these kind of things on their behalf. Uh, but if you feel that there is no fitna, that they will not uh, hold it against you, right? they're such nice people. <laughs> but in time of Sahaba, Right, whereby there were of the disbelievers, right, who were like vicious against the Muslims, right, and the Muslims will 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 get very upset with them, but thereafter, some of them come into Islam, right, and then so it's, it's a clean slate, uh, they start fresh after Islam, right, and they coming into Islam, and Allah and Allah knows best, you know, Allah, it's just all tricky situations, so for us to really try our best not to go there, and if someone really feels that you need to rent out. Then ran to the one who can change the situation for you, and that's Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And it's a training. When I first learned it uh, with my teacher about renting to Allah, <laughs> just is letting it out to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. I used to think, no, you still need to talk to people. You still need to talk to people. But actually, you know what? No. If you really train yourself, it is enough talking to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and because He's the only who can change it, right? He can help you. He can. If, if the problem is with you, He will know it. Right, wrong with if that person, he will know it. Like he sees all sides, right? But if you go around reading other people, they only hear your complaints, and that's a bit biased, right? And because they don't hear what's going on with that person, and why why she is, you know, uh, doing what she's doing or whatever lah, right? And then they will, and, and how they advise you is based on how what you ran to them. It's biased, uh, like that. Right? When well, you hear what you want to hear, right? So of course, if you really want to be sincere, talk to Allah. Just tell Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if the problem is with you, then ask him to fix you. <laughs> right? If the problem is with them, then ask him to guide them. Right? Whoever it is the problem, don't know who. And then for you, both of you are the problem. <laughs> and Allah will fix both of you. <laughs> and then good. And then everybody becomes better. And that's the whole point. You don't want people to be destroyed. You want people and yourself to get better. Right? That's, that's the whole thing about being sincere to other other human beings. And that's the way of our Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Here's the first part. We write like a journal or a diary. Dear diary. Kak Mara wrong me today. I feel so sakit hati. Is it okay? As long as nobody reads it. So you can write. If you write, if it helps you writing in your... People they need to release the negative thoughts or whatever. Yeah. If someone reads it. So your diary is now an app in your phone that has a password. <laughs> uh, that works, right? Because no one else listens to your phone and then password. <laughs> right, but if, if it helps you, then it helps you. Then there is no um, you know, a backbiting to anybody else. Uh, it's basically just you writing it out. Can I can you write Ya Allah? It's not the diary, eh? Diary is eh? Right, Ya Allah. Right, this happened, happened, happened. So it's, just, it's, it's your own conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you write it out uh, in written form. Right, so it's only, it's, it's in you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dear right. Jinnan. <laughs> Say, Dear Allah, like, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. Um, next chap, the next uh, paragraph. For true repentance to be sound, it means to be accepted, he must feel sincerely remorseful for his sins. That's the first one. Right? To be sincerely remorseful. To be truly and wholly determined not to repeat such actions as long as he lives. Number two, second condition. Right? So, re- sincerely remorseful, having full determination not to repeat it. Number two, right? a person who repents from a certain sin, then he does not uh, refrain from them or is still harboring the intention to repeat them. His repentance is false and invalid, right? So, it, um, and especially with uh, sins that have to do with specific places and specific people, right? So, if somebody, for example, wants to repent from uh, smoking, for example, I don't want to smoke anymore, right? But you know that particular friends, if you go there to them in this time of the night, confirm they will be smoking, right? You know it. You know that's their habit. 
and you know if you go there they will uh, influence you to smoke and they will put you and make you smoke right uh, so it's on you from your repentance to not go there and you need to resist and you say and not tempt yourself don't go there right same thing also uh, if let's say when it comes to backbiting like if you know there's a particular friend that uh, that you two share the same enemy <laughs> for example like, the same person in the workplace you both hate right? and you know if you're too alone that's it you begin to back about her confirm right so then you need to try not to have yourselves alone because you know straight away it begins the backbiting you need to start, unless you can make you can say to her okay you know what the two of us we will repent okay <laughs> right, from backbiting what that girl okay you help me and I help you Right now, you can make a pack, make a pack with each other. I said we're not going to do it. Okay, we're not going to do it. Right, so you help me and I help you. All right, and then you work together on on it. Right, so when she begins, see, we made a promise. Say eh? we're not supposed to talk about that person. Eh, but she's so don't say it, don't say it. <laughs> don't tell me, don't tell me what you want to say about her. Right, so. Uh, there is a hadith by Rasulullah said that uh, the one who is uh, listening, he is what he is uh, what equally yeah, no. sinful no. Uh, of the meaning of the hadith, or he is one of the two who are backbiting. No. Uh, the listener, yeah. So you need to actually either remove yourself from the situation, <laughs> right? If you're able to remove yourself, uh, but if you really cannot, like your at your auntie's house and no. just throw it onto the ground, no. like, it's just finish. Right, then after that, when once it's out of the system, right, then they can start to begin to, to make vinegar. Right, if they want to make vinegar. Lah. Right, but they cannot keep it there and just look at it every day. <laughs> right, so you're going to drink it, you're going to drink it. Uh, so the one who's really, really sincere in their repentance, they throw it out. And right, you get rid of it. You don't tempt your nafs. Uh, so if say, someone wants to repent from you know, watching all kinds of soap operas, you know, or Korean drama or whatsoever. We have to repent. You can see, waste time. Ramadan is coming. Now in Rajab, Sha'aban, Ramadan. Right? It's a full, a lot of waste time. Right? And, we, we, and you don't even have to prove it. Everyone knows it. It's a, it's a big waste timer. So you have to throw it, right? So you just go to your, uh, I don't know what they use, TV or Netflix or whatever. Uh, do something to stop yourself. Sell the TV. <laughs> 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 okay, unsubscribe. Okay, unsubscribe from it, right? Or delete the whole thing, you know. Or don't let, uh, don't let your husband give you his card number, so you cannot key anything. Uh, so do something to stop the nafs. The nafs is very strong. Uh, Six hundred episodes long. Hundred episodes. Okay, if you. Yeah, if if your intention is to gain knowledge, oh, if that's your intention, but if your intention is like oh for fun, it's up to you. So if you see that if it helps you, okay. If you're if you're looking at the actor and seeing the actor handsome, gain knowledge and does it help you with your ibadah? Then you sh- you you you, you get to be ne- neglectful of responsibilities. Do you you have to see? <laughs> Alhamdulillah.
Okay, I don't know about this. But basically, it goes down to your intention and also it goes down to how it has been affecting you as a Muslim. So if it's making you a better Muslim, oh no. <laughs> so that you see, watching it, you begin to do more slawats. You watch it, you begin to do your tahajud better. You watch it, you begin to, you, know, you wake up, right? You begin to wake up. Then it has a good impact on you. But if you watch, then you watch late during the night and then subuh, we pray super late. <laughs> and the next morning. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They talk about Prophet and put their hands yeah. in their heart. They yeah, answer to me, right? Uh, <laughs> 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 Alright, so basically you see how, how whether there's yeah, a benefit yeah, for your yeah, akhirah. Yeah. Uh, benefit for the akhirah. Alright, so he says here, Right, uh, a seeker to the path of Allah should continuously be extremely aware of his shortcomings towards his duties and obligations to his Lord. Whenever he feels regret, sad and heartbroken at these shortcomings, then let him know that Allah is with him. And this is how we address our shortcomings. And so the first thing is that you need, first thing, first thing is that you need to be aware. So you mentioned just now, to go on this path, you need to be self-reflective, to reflect onto yourself, and self-reprimanding. Right? So you need to be the, your, your best critic, <laughs> or your worst critic. You need to be your worst critic. Then, uh, and towards your duties, right? so, you, so your prayers, your fasting, towards your family, towards your husband, towards your children. Right? You criticize yourself. Right? But in a way by which you... Place your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your dependence on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you don't criticize yourself in a way whereby you spiral into this self-loathing uh, situation. But you criticize yourself in a way whereby you begin to try harder uh, and, and, and do, do it better. Right? So it says here right, that uh, so whenever he feels regret, sad and heartbroken because of his own shortcomings, and that's how you feel heartbroken. You feel heartbroken over your own self. I say, oh, what la me? <laughs> I'm like this. You know what la me? I'm like that. Try, try harder, try harder, try harder. So you don't actually feel low about yourself in a way whereby you want people to to pujo you, you know, or to try and you know, uh, you know, comfort you to raise your ego, right, or your emotions. But in a sense, you criticize yourself to to think of solutions. How do I be better? Be be very practical, right, with this. And that is why here. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the hadith Qudsi, Allah says, Ana inda munkasiratil kulubuhum, munkasiratil kulubihim, Ana inda munkarti kulubuhum, min ajli, I am with those whose hearts break for my sake. And this is important. People always quote this, uh, this hadith halfway, right, where they say, Allah is with those who, is with the broken hearted. Or Allah is with those whose hearts break. The full hadith is Allah is with those whose heart break for His sake. Right? So if someone goes out with boyfriend and then break up and the heartbroken, oh Allah is with me. Right? I mean, if you if you repent and you talk about and you go to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, right, you can say, right? But you can't say the kind of heartbreak is because you you engaged in it was haram in the first place, right? Because you did all these haram things and you're heartbroken and you say, oh my heart broken. Right. I mean, no. Like what it, it, mean, it, mean, it means here is that, for example, someone who, you know, you do, you do your prayer, right, and then the whole time you're like, ah, my mind was all over the place in this prayer. It was such a really, really badly done prayer. And your heart breaks right, because of how you would, uh, perform your prayer. Right? Or if somebody, you know, wants to repent and begins to, wants to pray five times a day. And then, but every morning, like, she puts her alarm at you know, at six o'clock to wake up for subo or now Malaysia says subo what time? Six thirty. <laughs> so late. Six fifteen eh? La how la wala kuata la villa. Six twenty, eh, mashallah. So you so she put a lamp at six twenty. She put a lamp at six thirty. Put a lamp at six forty five. Put a lamp at seven o'clock. Put a lamp at seven fifteen. Right? Still wake up eight o'clock. <laughs> alarm, 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 alarm. Don't wake up at all. I mean, I mean, she's, but she's trying, she's trying because she's not used to paying Zubo, for example, and nobody in the house with her. So she, oh, at 8 o'clock, wake up, bright light, and the sun out there, and she cries. 
He says, Ya Allah, why am I like this? Why I cannot do whatever it takes to wake up for subuh? <laughs> right? uh, that is called the one whose heart is broken for the sake of Allah. Uh, that is called right? the one whose heart breaks for the sake of Allah. So if you go back to our friend who has a boyfriend, right? If she, uh, so if she breaks up with that guy saying that this is haram and I want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And she breaks up right? and she says, Ya Allah, I'm doing this for you, and her heart is breaking. Uh, that one is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, her heart is breaking because she's only breaking up with him because she's seeing that the relationship is not going anywhere. Right? It's not going towards marriage, they're doing a lot of dosa together. Right? So she feels that there's nothing, there's nothing in there. Right? It's not going anywhere. And it's, it's, it's gaining a lot of sin. So even though she loves him, it breaks up. Right? No, right? because it is against my religion. Uh, so this is what... What it means by the heart breaks for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And that day I was met this girl and she's only mashallah, very, very very young, 14 years old or 15 years old. Right? And then she uh, came up to me after class, because I was teaching teenagers. She came up to me after class and she said, uh, and she said, she, she sat down, her face, her face was very stone throughout the class. She came quite late in the class. She sat in front of me and then she said, you know, Ustaza, and then her, her lips began to tremble. She's going to shake. And then she says, I don't know why I'm going to cry, but I'm going to cry. <laughs> and I said to her, what, what, what's going on? What's wrong? And she says, I don't know, but I just don't pray. Yeah, she said, you know, I just don't, I just don't like to pray. I don't like it. I find it hard, I find it difficult. And she says, does Allah hate me? Does Allah, you know, and she's shaking. And she's crying. This kind of people, they need mercy. You need to see them with the eye of mercy. Because they're crying that her heart is being broken because of Allah, for the sake of Allah. And that she's, she's feeling sad in herself that she can't get it right with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So while she thinks herself to be a terrible Muslim, you know, I'm looking at her and I'm saying to her, you know, the very fact you're sitting in front of me and you're crying because you can't pray. And how many kids at 14 years old who miss their prayers cry for it? You know, how many of them actually care? <laughs> I mean, most, most of our kids will be like, uh, no pray, no pray. Uh. I don't care, right? Uh, let's go out, uh, go and watch movie. Uh, I mean, they couldn't care less. Right? At that age, if you feel heartbroken that you just, you just, or she says, you just don't like it, and it hurts you that you don't like it, uh, that, that itself is an Im- it's a form of iman. That's in the heart. Uh, it's just iman going on in her. And I'm looking at her, I'm seeing, mashallah. This guy said to, her, said to her, Allah is looking at you. He's gazing at you. He's putting that pain inside of your heart. Right? And that shows his care for you. To pull you towards him. Uh, it's, not, it's, it's opposite of what you think of. Right? You think that he hates you. The very fact that you can think about him. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that itself is him pulling you to him. Right? If, he, if he really you know, is angry with you. He will let you do whatever you want to do without you feeling any guilt whatsoever. You know, go la, go and destroy yourself. Go and you know and, uh, do all this kind of nonsense. But the very fact that he actually made her feel that pain and after that come up and, and talk about it, let it out, not keep it to herself. Uh, talk about it to them, try and find a solution. Uh, what do I do with myself? And I said to her, Tr- keep trying, keep trying. I uh, aim which prayers you can do. Keep trying for those. Uh, in, in during the school holidays. Right? Make sure you pray all five times a day. Right? In, in, when you're in school, try to find time. And we know when you go to Singapore secular education, I don't know about Malaysia, but Singapore, like majority of the, cho- of the students there don't pray Zohor. Right? Majority of them don't pray Zohor. Because why? School goes all the way until 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. Zohor all miss. Right? So some of them go back and they cut up their Zohor. But most of them let go of prayers altogether. And, and, that's, and I know that's the reality of our situation in, in our country. <laughs> you know, prayers are really uh, shelved, and a lot of people later on they begin to uh, be serious about their prayer. So for these youngsters, you know, from a very young age, to just try and you know instill in them uh, this this uh, desire right, to pray and the pain if they don't pray, right? they just feel that. But Mashallah, I said to her that I, just to see that she's crying. And not like how other 14 year olds might cry because they have no iPhone or they have no, you know, like, like you're crying because of your prayer. That says a lot about your iman. 
He says a lot, MashaAllah. You know, while she's struggling, eh, you know, five prayers. Eh, but MashaAllah, these kind of tears are delivered to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The tears for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So, subhanAllah, uh, people who, like, they, they cry, like, and this is something in the Quran also. You know, and there's a beautiful verse in the Quran um, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, quotes a group of people who come up to Rasulullah wasallam, and he's going out for war. He's going to um, Tabuk. Right? It's a far away war. Right? And they need a lot of, everyone needs a right to be in this battle, in this jihad. So, uh, like, and, and, and they're going up against the Romans. Eh? So there were people who came to Medina all ready to want to go for jihad, but they are too poor. They don't have uh, any, an animal to ride on. They can't walk. It's not possible to walk. It's too far. And you need an animal to ride on. At least three people share an animal. Right? At least. The kind, of, the kind of poverty they had. So they came to Medina hoping the Prophet has rights to give out to people. So they go there and, 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 uh, and they go to Rasulullah and saying that, Ya Rasulullah, we are ready to go and fight jihad with you, right? but we have no animal right, to ride on. And Rasulullah says to them, I also don't have any animal. And they are also poor. Because right? our army was a huge army. Right? So they didn't have enough right, to, to give these people. And these people, right, they just they, they accepted the answer of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, meaning that they can't go for war. You can't come along. You are rejected. No space for you all. Right? But he says it in a nice way. Like, I, I can't even bring you all along. I have not, nothing to give. Right? And Allah says in the Quran, Allah quotes them, they turn away from the Prophet because they are grown men. They turn away from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but their eyes are welling up in tears. Out of disappointment that they cannot go with the Prophet to strive and struggle in the hot sun to go and fight jihad. So why are they crying? They're crying because they actually cannot strive for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why they're crying. I mean, subhanAllah, it's our people of, people of Allah. I mean, they, they, they feel disappointed that they can't do that for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And then they turn around and they, and they try to hide their tears so the Prophet will not see them uh, with their tears in their eyes. They, they turn around and they try to hide it. Then Allah quotes them in the Quran. And Allah, in the Quran, Allah says, these people, they turn around right? with their, their hearts grieving. You know, and their ears, uh, and their, 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 their eyes are uh, tearing right, out of longing to, that they can't give for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, subhanallah, this, really, this is called the heart broken for the sake of Allah. It's really called the heart broken for the sake of Allah. The poor in the world of Islam, they felt heart broken that they don't have enough money to give out in tzedakah. Because they themselves are poor. <laughs> and that hurts them that they can't give tzedakah right, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, Allah will give them the reward. Right, the date of what their hearts desired uh, to do. This is hadith. This is a very beautiful hadith. You can go deep into it and understand it. So people in our time, we know what to break our hearts over. <laughs> Let somebody call you, you know, some uh, some name or call you some bad <laughs> trait. Not this kind of. These are petty, small things. Your heart should break over. You know, like like how you are falling short. Uh, in in your love for the prophets, Allah Alaihi Wasallam. You're falling short in your slawas, falling short in your, in your istighfar, falling short in a lot of things. Uh, that's where your heart should break. The first of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, so that is, and that is why this hadith is a very important hadith for us to understand. Right, um, I'm going to read the last part here. He says here, A seeker should protect himself from the smallest of by all kinds of filth. And whereas our own bodies, we, 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 we take care. Our soul, you know, uh, free for all to destroy. <laughs> I mean, subhanAllah. The eyes are the windows to the soul. So we must also see what our eyes are looking at. Like what are we, what are we, you know, the, this is the TV. A lot of it in there is slowly destroying and blackening the soul that's inside the human being. It really is doing that. Now, it used to be slow. Now it's all outright fast. <laughs> A lot of uh, really ugly things. And everyone knows it. But people are still doing it. We all know it. We know. It's full of filth uh, on, in, in the TV set. So that's why, so, so to tell, to tell yourself, sin is poison. Say that to yourself. It's poison. Right? It's uh, the flesh of, or it's, it's rotten flesh to, 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 to backbite. Right? You need to really understand this. In Israel and Mi'raj, Rasam saw the ones who, you know, they. Uh, like they, they're pulling out their tongue and cutting their tongue because of the, of the, of the lying. And those who were bashing their heads, right? those who were uh, eating rotten food. Right? All of these are the manifestations of what sin is. 
Like it's distra- destruction of human beings in Israel and Mirage. In the story of Israel and Mirage. So he says here, right, uh, the heart of the seeker is more precious to him than his body. No, it is the investment capital of the seeker. And he should thus accord it uh, its rightful protection. Uh, it is your investment capital, meaning that your, uh, your, your heart or your soul, right, that is what Allah entrusts <coughs> to you. Now, Allah entrusted to you your soul, your heart, for you to be able to get closer to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So if you are going to destroy it, then you are just, you are just uh, uh, sabotaging your own vehicle to bring you to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You sabotage your own self in getting involved in sin. Right? So, they need to, so these kind of things need to really be very clear to ourselves, to our youngsters, Right, really, what is sin? And let them understand that when it comes to sin, it's really their own souls. Not my soul. It's your soul. Whichever soul sins is on them. Right, so then they have responsibility over, over, over what they do. It's no longer about you know, hiding from people. It's not about people. It's about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even, even then, Allah does not hurt. I know is he harmed from your sin. It's you right, who is harmed. Then who are you hiding from? Yourself. You can't hide from yourself. You're hurting your own self, right? Subhanallah. Understand these kind of things. It can really help people right? get through get through life. So finish the the chapter. It says here. Like, on the other hand, the body is a target for diseases and will soon be destroyed by death. Its death, however, means only that one has to leave this grief and anxiety laden well, the death of a human being and <laughs> then left the world <laughs> right. however if the heart is ruined uh, this one continues to the next world and that is more uh, more destructive then the hereafter is ruined too for indeed no one will escape and be rescued from the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the almighty obtain his rewards and win his pleasure except the one who comes to Allah with a sound heart, right? purifying the heart. Allah man, Allah man salim. As for the one who comes to Allah right, with a sound heart, right? so he speaks about this. So it is it is compulsory for everyone right, to begin to purify their hearts, purify their their lives. Uh, we're in Rajab right now. Rajab is a month of istighfar. Right, to do your istighfar morning and evening in abundance. Right. Yeah. What are you doing with this year? <laughs> oh. <laughs> right. So, oh, oh, no. right, so we're in Rajab. We pray for our heart, pray for our, our souls. Uh, as we go towards Ramadan in Sha'aban, we'll be doing a lot of slawat on Rasulullah Aslam. Because it is the month whereby the ayat in Allah Malaikatu Sulu Anawi, Yahiladina Amun Solu Ali Sulu Alahi was a bit mutaslima. I for surely Allah Masasana was in a month. I for surely the, the angels, Allah and his angels send slawat on the Rasulullah. All you who believe send slawat and salutations on the Rasulullah. This ayat was revealed in Sha'ban. Uh, so it's a month of slawat, it's a month of healing the heart. Right? Because in, in Rajab is heart scrubbing. Right, a lot of istighfar, 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 scrubbing the heart, scrubbing your, your life. And then in Sha'ban, you're healing with Salawat. In Ramadan comes the month of Qur'an. Uh, and in all of the gifts of Qur'an, your heart is able to be a, the, the, the best vessel to accept all of these gifts. And your Ramadan will be very different when you begin in, in Rajab. Right, so inshallah, we have only half a month left of Rajab. Increase our istighfar of Rajab, inshallah. Uh, uh, and inshallah next month, right, Sha'aban, we will do our slawats in, uh, in Ramadan, inshallah. <laughs> Three ten o'clock, alhamdulillah. Right, anyone has any um, questions or comments? No questions? Yeah. Yeah, we can read the zikr together. Um, yeah, so we can do our istighfar together if you want. Right, this istighfar, Kriza is a book by Imam Al Haddad. Right, this istighfar is a compilation of istighfars that were taught to us by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Some of it, 
right and of by the scholars by the son of by the son of Imam Al Haddad right Habib Hassan bin Abdullah bin Alwi Al Haddad by his son right so I'm just gonna uh, so no 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 that is uh, years ago <laughs> now is like 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 berzaman <laughs> it's his son it's his son uh, so he's the writer this writer his son so I'll just uh, read lah from this book Astaghfirullah Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah Wa atubu ila Allah min jami'i ma yakrahuhullah Qawlan wa fi'alan wa khatiran wa naziran Aw zahiran Astaghfirullah al-azim al-zim La ilaha illa huwa al-hayu al-qayyum Wa atubu ilaih Allahumma inni astaghfirka li ma qaddamtu Wa ma akhartu wa ma asrartu Wa ma a'lantu Wa ma asraftu wa ma anta a'anu bihi minni Anta al-muqaddim wa anta al-muakhir Wa anta a'ala kulli shayin qadir Astaghfirullah Hazal jalali wal ikram Min jami'i zunubi wal atham Astaghfirullah li zunubi Kulliha, sirriha, wa jahriha Wa saghiriha, wa kabiriha Wa qadimiha, wa jadidiha, wa awaliha Wa akhiriha, wa zahiriha Wa batiniha, wa atubu ilayhi Allahumma inni astaghfiruka Min kulli zambin tubtu ilayka ثم منه ثم أدت فيه وأستغفرك لما أردت به وجهك الكريم فخالته ما ليس لك فيه رضا رضاك وأستغفرك لما وعدتك وعدتك به من نفسي ثم أخلفتك فيه وأستغفرك لما دعاني إليه الهوى من قبل رخص مما اشتبه علي وهو عندك حرام أستغفرك يا من لا إله إلا أنت يا عالم الغيب والشهادة من كل سيئة عملتها في بياض النهار وسواد الليل في في ملأ أو وخال خلاء وسر وعلانية وأنت ناظر إلي إذا إذا ارتكبتها وأتيت بها من الغيب وأطراف النهار فتركتها خطأ أو عمدا أو نسيانا أو تهاونا أو جهلا وأنا مؤاقب بها وأستغفرك من كل سنة من سنة سيد المرسلين وخاتم النبي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم فتركتها غفلة أو سهوا أو نسيانا أو تهاونا أو جهلا أو قلة مبالاة بها وأستغفرك يا من لا إله إلا أنت وحدك لا شريك لك وأن, وأن سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك سبحانك رحيم اللهم أنت ربي لا إله إلا أنت خلقتني وأنا عبدك وأنا على عهدك وعدك مستعت أعوذ بك من شر ما سنعت أبو لك بنعمتك علي وبذنب فاغفر لي فإنه لا يغفر زنوبا إلا أنت اللهم أنت ربي لا إله إلا أنت خلقتني وأنا عبدك وأنا على عهدك وعدك مستعت أعوذ بك من شر ما سنعت أبو لك بنعمتك علي وبذنب فاغفر لي فإنه لا يغفر زنوبا إلا أنت اللهم أنت ربي لا إله إلا أنت خلقتني وأنا عبدك وأنا عليك وعليك مستعت أعوذ بك من